Okay. This is definitely one of my faves and it's probably one of the most, one of the more unknown books uh, in terms of medicinal mushrooms. And that is uh, Ling Zhe, uh, From Mystery to Science uh, by uh, Professor Zhu Bin Lin. Um, so he is a Chinese researcher. Uh, his background is in pharmacology and uh, he's put out a ton of papers on reishi. So he's probably one of the top reishi scientists in China, if not all of Asia. Um, and so I was able to actually meet him two or three years ago uh, at a reishi conference in Fujian province in China. Uh, it's a really cool book um, because it really looks at more of the background and let's say traditional history in China for reishi. So you get a lot of the Chinese perspective, uh, which I think gets lost in a lot of the books, uh, English books. So this is a translated book from Chinese. Um, he talks about the history of reishi in China. He looks at um, how it's reported in the Materia Medica. So if you know, don't know about the Materia Medica, that's uh, what a lot of traditional Chinese medicine is based off. So the Materia Medica was supposedly created by Shenog, who is the god of agriculture. And in it contained uh, over 300 different medicinal herbs. And in it, and in that, they had reishi in there, and reishi was supposed to be one of the highest rated, highest quality herbs uh, in all of these different herbal medicines that they talked about. Another cool thing that this book goes into is the six mythical reishi colors. Uh, and if you don't know, there's a few articles on the internet that talk about it, but not very many. Uh, and this is red reishi, uh, blue reishi, blue or green, uh, white black, yellow, and purple. And he looks at the historical texts to, to try and figure out exactly uh, what these reishi are, uh, because back in, I guess this is maybe 2000 years ago, uh, we didn't have DNA analysis. Um, so a lot of the people that were using these mushrooms at the time didn't really know which species they were. Uh, so they could have been reishis, they could have been completely something else because there's a lot of different polypores that look like reishi. And we've actually got an article on that. Um, it'll be somewhere here if you want to check it out where we actually dive into that and look at uh, the diff six different colors and what species they actually are. Uh, another piece that the book goes into is the different stages of mushrooms. Uh, so that's very important. We talk about it a lot on our website. Uh, just when you look at uh, mushroom, which a lot of people are familiar with, which is the fruiting body, uh, mycelium, uh, so that's the vegetative body, and spore, which is the main reproductive piece that comes out of the mushroom. He talks about the active compounds in reishi. Uh, he looks at maybe seven different primary conditions that reishi is prescribed for in China. Another section, he talks about reishi quality, and this is always something that we're very big on. And he discusses how the pore layer on the underside of the reishi mushroom and what the color is and how the color relates to quality. And that's definitely more of a TCM thing with the uh, colors. But it's interesting too because uh, the reishi that they grow over in China, uh, Ganoderma lucidum, uh, which is now known as Ganoderma lingzhi, uh, has a yellow pore layer on it. And a lot of the reishi that they grow over here, if you look at the different species here, typically have a white pore layer. Um, and so according to him, he says the uh, yellow pore layer is the best. Uh, also, another piece of that was he talked about a graying pore layer. And this typically means after the reishi mushroom has sporulated and it's released all of its spores, he talks about how it starts to go gray. And that was of the least kind of lowest quality. And this is very true because uh, after, the spore, after the spores have been released, uh, this mushroom will start to degrade and other whether it's bacteria or fungi, will start to move in and start to consume this. And we've seen that uh, just in some of our testing where we've noticed that uh, reishi that has typically been grown for spore collections is of lower quality and can have a lot of different fungal species and bacterial species uh, in that. And so the reishi that we use for extractions uh, is only used for mushroom extractions. They don't use it for spore collection at all. Another piece this book mentions is testing, uh, specifically polysaccharide testing. And in uh, China, they do a lot of polysaccharide analysis as a quality control measure for mushroom extracts. And this is uh, really misleading. Uh, we've got actually got a whole 
We got an article on it on our website if you check out somewhere here um, that looks at it. And so polysaccharide testing, polysaccharides are complex sugars and they are a very wide range of compounds. And so with a lot of extracts, uh, typically carriers get added in in the spray drying process. Uh, this could be dextrose or maltodextrin. And this can actually easily spike your polysaccharide numbers. So this is why we say don't look at polysaccharide numbers at all. Completely ignore those. Uh, you want to specifically look for beta-glucan analysis. So beta-glucans are polysaccharide. Uh, but they are more specific. And so you can analyze specifically for those. So we always say to just completely ignore polysaccharide analysis. So overall, this book is excellent. Uh, if you can find a copy, I would definitely recommend you go get it. Um, it might be a little bit hard to find. Uh, so this is a translated copy from Chinese, but if you can uh, find it, definitely check it out. So the number two book on our list is Medicinal Mushrooms, A Clinical Guide by Martin Powell. So this book came out in 2010, so it's fairly new, and it covers a lot of the more clinical applications. Um, so it looks at specific uses for these mushrooms in um, different diseases, different ailments, different types of treatment. Uh, so Martin Powell is a biochemist and a Chinese herbalist. Uh, so he's been practicing Chinese herbal medicine for around 20 years. Uh, he teaches it as well. Um, I've had the chance to meet him uh, just over a year ago, a uh, really great guy. So in the book, he looks at 19 different mushrooms and he looks at the main applications for these mushrooms, as well as the key compounds in each of these mushrooms, and then dosage and safety. He also has a section on mushroom products and the breakdown of mushroom products, because if you're a follower of real mushrooms, you know that there's a very vast uh, difference in mushroom products and how they are processed. So he looks at mushroom extracts, he looks at uh, liquid fermentation mycelium, he looks at solid state mycelium, uh, also known as myceliated grain. Uh, he's got an entire section on mushrooms and cancer therapy, uh, which a lot of people are interested in, as well as mushrooms and which applications they can use for different types of diseases or ailments. Uh, every section has a ton of references at the end, which is great. There's another section on extraction methods. So he goes through the different extraction methods, uh, whether it's hot water, dual, uh, or alcohol extract. Uh, there's a quick reference guide. So the quick reference guide is really nice if you just wanna have a quick look at some mushroom and say, hey, it's primarily used for X, Y, and Z. So all in all, this is definitely one of my favorite books and it should be added to any medicinal mushroom enthusiast collection. Another great new book that came out is another similar title, Medicinal Mushrooms, uh, The Human Clinical Trials. And this is by Robert Rogers. Uh, and he has been an herbalist for a very long time. And if you know the fungal pharmacy, I haven't read that book, but a lot of people like that book and he's the author of that book as well. Uh, so the cool thing about this is that it is brand new. Uh, it came out in 2020 and it looks at all the recent clinical data and covers over 50 different mushroom species, uh, 500 different papers. Um, so this was a great reference for me just to find new clinical studies because those can always be tough to find. And so we definitely sourced a bunch of different research papers through this book that we added to our library. Uh, so if you want to dive more into the science uh, on top of Chris Hobbs' book uh, and Martin Powell's book, this is another great one to add to your collection. All right, so our next book is... Healing Mushrooms uh, by Taro Isokaupala. Taro, hopefully I pronounced that right. Uh, I've known Taro for uh, a while now. Uh, if you don't know, he's the uh, founder of Four Sigmatic. And this book goes into a lot of his story and his journey to mushrooms. Uh, it's quite interesting. Um, it is more of a beginner's guide to mushrooms. Um, so it doesn't really dive into the science a whole lot. Um, there's not a lot of references there. There's, uh, I'd say, a few sort of grandiose claims um, and even some kind of strange claims. So it does say that tremella mushroom is uh, one of the highest sources of vitamin D uh, for any food source. I've never heard that. I've never seen research on that. Um, overall, the content is, uh, it's pretty short, so it's a pretty easy read. Uh, and there's probably two thirds of the book is just recipes. So if you're interested 
in recipes, uh, definitely that's a good one for you. Um, and if you're new to mushrooms, I'd say that's uh, definitely a good starter to uh, dive in. And last but not least, we have Medicinal Mushrooms by Christopher Hobbs. Uh, so Christopher Hobbs is a internationally renowned herbalist. Um, he's one of the founding members of the American Herbalist Guild. Uh, he's been working with herbal medicine for over 35 years. Uh, and this is just a really solid resource that I come back to a lot. I'm pretty sure it's the first book that my dad gave me when I started getting into medicinal mushrooms. So it was published in 2003, so it is on the old side a little bit. So it will be lacking in some of the newer clinical data. Um, but it really goes through a lot of the historical records, clinical data, and in vivo data. Um, so it talks about historical use in uh, ancient Asia, um, also in ancient Greece, uh, as well as in North America with uh, First Nations people. Um, there's also a small section on psychedelics, which is definitely sort of before its time, considering how popular psychedelics are now. He also talks about adaptogens, which is really big when you're dealing with herbs as well, and sort of how, what adaptogens are and how they interact with our body. So that was a cool piece to see him add in there. Um, another piece when he's talking about dosage, which I thought was quite interesting and what we see a lot at Real Mushrooms and what we tell most of our customers is that, you know, it takes a lot of time to see some of these benefits. Uh, and he recommended taking it for taking mushrooms for at least three months. Um, he looks again at nutritional info. So it talks about nutritional information of mushrooms, um, the different vitamins, minerals, uh, protein, all that kind of stuff. Uh, then he goes into uh, recipes for making your own tinctures. Uh, so if you're going to be harvesting out in the wild, um, there's recipes in there to show you how to actually turn those into your own liquid tinctures, uh, as well as recipes for fresh mushrooms, which are cool. Um, and then he dives into a lot of the research on the different medicinal mushrooms. So he covers uh, 28 different species, goes over uh, common names, uh, their growing habitat, the geographical region uh, where you can find them, uh, the traditional history, uh, as well as the chemical constituents, so the active compounds in there and pharmacology of each one, and uh, looks at clinical trial data. Uh, there's a little piece on toxicity. Uh, then he talks about the traditional Chinese medicine uses, which is pretty cool because you can see a uh, difference in culture there. So things say like lion's mane um, here, we talk about it, everyone kind of knows it for brain health. Um, but uh, over in Asia and specifically China, uh, they use it for uh, the stomach. Um, so a lot of stomach related uh, issues, uh, they'll recommend lion's mane for that. Then he looks at uh, medical preparations for it and uses. Uh, and then dosages. Uh, there's also a funny section where he's uh, talking about kombucha, which is now super popular. Uh, probably wasn't so much back in 2003, uh, but that's actually, uh, let's see, yeast and bacteria culture that they use to uh, ferment black tea. Um, and then just tons of references. So then there's 40 pages of references. So if you wanna dive into uh, where he gets um, his data from, you can do that. Um, so it's good to see that it is all backed up uh, with the scientific literature. And if you've stuck around this long, I've got one bonus book for you, which you might find quite fascinating. It definitely if you love cordyceps. So this is an illustrated guide to the ecology of Japanese cordyceps. And it's actually by the Japanese Society for Cordyceps Research. And I actually found out about it from Daniel Winkler. Uh, he stopped in a couple years ago when he was attending a mushroom conference, if you don't know Daniel Winkler, uh, you can look up mushroaming.com and he does cordyceps tours around the world, specifically in uh, South America and uh, in the Bhutan region and Nepal. So if you want to check out Cordyceps Sinensis in the wild, uh, check out his website and uh, he does a lot of very cool tours there. Uh, but this book, I can't read Japanese, uh, but it is full of cordyceps photos of all kinds of different species. And it's just fascinating, even if I can't read it. So you might have trouble sourcing it. Uh, I had to get my uncle who's uh, fluent in Japanese to try and find it for me. Um, but definitely uh, if you're into cordyceps, it's uh, a must have. Just so you know, if you wanna try out real mushrooms, check out the link down below in the description and you can save 25% off your first purchase.
If you want to learn more about medicinal mushrooms, make sure to check out our blog, subscribe down below, as well as you can check us out on Facebook and our Real Mushrooms Insiders group, where we have over 9,000 people talking about mushrooms on a daily basis.